Hello, welcome back to, or welcome to Unboxing the Doll World. If you have been with me for a while, thank you for that. But I'm sorry for my absence. I have been dealing with bipolar depression. I do have bipolar disorder. I also struggle with fibromyalgia and my pain has been through the charts. So between having depression and no motivation and having pain all the time, it is very hard to do most things. I've literally just been sleeping and sitting like that's all I've been doing today is the first day I have been able to do anything so I thank you for waiting for a video and I'm sorry I haven't been doing one for a while I miss doing this and I'm happy to be here again so thank you disclaimer although this is not gonna be a very scary video if you're not really into horror or horror movies or horror stories I don't think this video is for you but if you're into that, I think you're going to like this video and this doll a lot. I found this doll after going through Darling Dolls Iceberg video of different dolls. And I was instantly hooked. These are lower on the iceberg, more not well known. But I have found some Instagram people that really do love these dolls. And I was very happy to find that. So I'm really happy to do a review of them. I love horror. I love Japanese horror in particular too. My favorite video game of all time is Fatal Frame or in the European countries it's Project Zero or in Japan it's Zero and it's one of my all-time favorite video games like I can't tell you how obsessed I am with this game. Um, I got into it in middle school with Fatal Frame 2 and I've just been hooked. Although, I won't lie, Maiden of the Water, <laughs> I haven't finished it yet. It's only because the Switch controls are just not fun. <laughs> so, but let me know if you are into, like, horror games. My other favorite is Silent Hill. Also, the only one I played was Shatter Memories for the Wii. I'm not very good at the console, like, other versions, the PS2 versions, or the remakes for the PS3. Um, I watched a lot of playthroughs of it though, and I thought they were really funny, especially Two Best Friends. If you ever want to watch a playthrough, they do pretty funny ones of the games that are not the best, and they do very serious ones of the ones that were the best, especially Silent Hill 2. But if you're really into horror games or horror movies, put in the comments and I will read or comment below. But yes, I really love horror. Um, sometimes I still get scared. I'm just like, I'll watch something and I'll be like, in the corner of my eye, like, what's that? <laughs> but um, I still love it. It's one of my favorites. I also like Resident Evil, but I've never been able to play it, mainly because the older games I really want to play, but the tank controls are just, I can't play. <laughs> I'm not very good at tank controls. So I just never really played it. I watched playthroughs against two best friends. Call me Kevin. I played. I watched a lot of their playthroughs, which are super funny <laughs> and really well done. So I love playthroughs, by the way. Let me know if you love game playthroughs. Some people are really hit and miss. Some people are like, just play the game. And I really like to do both. I like to play the game on some, and I really like to watch other people. If I play the game, I can't watch people play it because I'd be like, you got to do this. <laughs> you got to do that. So just a little caveat. <laughs> um, but yes, I love Fatal Frame is my all time favorite, as I said. And these dolls ap appeal to me because of the horror aspect, but also because of the Japanese aspect. And it kind of reminded me of some of the ghosts I had to fight when I was playing Fatal Frame. And if you ever play Fatal Frame, please let me know and I can obsess with you if you really like it. But yes, so let's move on to the doll. So today I'm reviewing Little Apple Dolls. This is Irai. And her face is got the little apple. It's got a tiny apple at the bottom and the logo for the company. I tried reading it earlier and I butchered it. So I'm just going to get close to it and let you go for it. <laughs> the sides are the same. And then this is the back of the box. Just as the brats, I really aim to own all of these dolls, as I said, because I'm pretty obsessed with like Japanese horror stories and stuff. And these are Japanese looking dolls. So, like they have the kimonos and like 
some of them have like school outfits that are pretty common in Japan. So some of the outfits are a little different. Um, maybe a little European based, but like I still really own like I still really aim to own all these dolls because I do like horror a lot. But this is little Apple Doll series two. Give Anamila Ero Irai Mentis. And little apple accessory, the story of Irai. And each doll comes with its own mask. Look for the range of other little apple products in the store. These dolls are not cheap if you decide to buy one. I paid roughly $100 for her. Um, I think for being... I don't know if these were explicitly sold in certain countries, but as I said, these were not cheap to get. So if you want to buy one, just kind of expect to pay a little bit more. But yeah, this is your eye, and now I will open her box. I love how this box is set up because it's Velcro, and you could just like, whoop. You can keep her in box pretty well and still get a pretty good view of her. I am going to take her out of box, and I don't feel too bad because this is kind of an older box, and her plastic holding her has become undone, so I don't feel too bad. But let me read the blurb that's inside. And forgive me because I'm not going to hold the box up for this. But let me read it. So welcome to the in-between place. I am Cook Headed Headcage. Charles and Little Apple Red are my friends. So glad you can join us. Charles says he is not pleased to meet your acquaintance. Little Apple Red says Charles is one step away from delirium and should be ignored. Little Apple Red says once upon a time he was an ordinary apple, small, plain, and red. He grew from the apple tree in an orchard. Like many, like there were many like him. He says the fate of ordinary apples is grim. Sometimes it gets lonely up there. Sometimes fallen apples are left to rot. Sometimes they're used as a target practice. And if you're real lucky, at the sun up, they get you and make you into food stuff. The little apple was to take another path. It, he is protector of Sign, the keeper's soul. Sign is the keeper of the in-between place. The children who live here are wandering souls. Little Apple Red says that the children of the in-between place are lost, lonely, and need protecting. Little Apple Red was chosen and marked, and that's why he looks the way he does. The keeper makes this so for the little fallen apples. Pins in this world are a sign of the damned. They can be used to hunt people if the user is wished by pins between, in between places are a sign of the chosen, friends of protectors. Let me introduce you to Irai. Irai is the best at fixing stuff. Like flowers and birds, but not people. They are the worst. You can't fix them, that's for sure. So she doesn't do that anymore. It made her feel funny. She has the best tea parties though. In her garden, she likes gardens a whole lot. They don't make her feel funny. So I kind of get this from like, from this blurb. I kind of get like apples, like you've seen the apple orchard, like some get to stay on the trees, some fall, some tend to rot. Some are still picked up from the ground. I kind of get from this blurb that, like, somebody may feel like that in their life. Like, they may feel like they're chosen, or they may feel like they're not part of something. And I like, they don't really say about her how she feels in that aspect, but she definitely seems like she's gotten a little tired of people. So I kind of like this blurb. <laughs> And I don't know if the beginning part is the same for each doll. I will get more dolls in the future. But the ending is her own specific blurb. But I really like this blurb. <laughs> and I think it says a lot based on the little blurb it says. So that's what it says on the inside. I'll give you a little closer look. It is kind of long. <laughs> it's a little story. I don't know what this is meant to be. But this is the blurb. It's got a little apple and it has a bird at the end. 
But this is her on the inside. She comes with the mask. She is wearing a kimono. And she is basically faceless. Which all the dolls in these line are faceless. And now I will take her out of box. But this is the Rai. And I really like her. <laughs> I think she's super cool. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know what you guys think, but I think she's super cool. Um, as I said, I plan to get all these dolls. Like, that is my goal. Like, as I said, with my horror obsession, like, these are just on my list. Like, I already own, I pretty, at this time, I own all the Rainbow High dolls. But they're coming out currently, so they're not as expensive. Brad dolls are hit and miss. Some are still not too high over retail price. Some are in the thousands. <laughs> so it's a little hit and miss. But she comes with her little apple. I think they all come with this. And she comes with her pins. Which I had to look up again. So the pins represent. Hold on one second. I'm trying to look for what's that. These pins, pins in this world are signed of the damned. They can be used to hurt people if the user so wished. But the pins between the pins in between places are a sign of the chosen, friends and protectors. I won't lie. I don't know entirely what that means. It kind of reminded me of a voodoo doll kind of thing. But let me know what you guys think or know about these dolls. As I said, when Darling Dolls did their iceberg video, these were a little bit lower. So I don't know how popular these dolls are. Like amongst, like I found some Instagram people that were really into these dolls. But from the video... I learned they're not the most popular. They should be. <laughs> if you're a horror fan, like, and you love dolls, you should like these dolls. <laughs> but these are and a little more about the dolls. They have different dolls in this picture, which again, I aim to own all of these. And it says, Little Apple invites you to become friends of the in-between. And it has, I'm pretty sure how to write in to get like things from them it says monthly newsletter and stuff um i'm not sure if that exists anymore but yes so next i will read the little story forgive me if i do stumble a little bit i was told i could read stories pretty well <laughs> but let's see how this goes so it is story time <laughs> this is Eri's storybook it is a little on the longer end, so as I said, if you're more interested in Dao, which this is a Dao channel, like, it's completely fine if you want to skip to the end, which I will talk again about the giveaway. If you're interested in these dolls and want to know, like, the lore, the story of them, I highly recommend watching this next part, but I will read this. <laughs> so, right away... I love the artwork for this. I love paintings or artwork that has silhouettes of people, and this has that. So I'm really a big fan. So it shows her right now in a garden. It says, Iraya's most favorite thing to do, to do was tend the roses in her garden. It was this she prized above all things. Little Apple Red says she would care for the garden and speak to the flowers as if they were old friends visiting for the day. Sometimes she would have tea parties, spending hours getting ready everything. Getting everything ready. <laughs> I said that wrong. <laughs> Sorry. The garden was one of the one of great beauty. So she really loved tending to flowers. Which I said that in her blurb. Whenever Irai walked Small flowers bloomed in her footprints. Willows and pines grew alongside, alongside stony paths. The tops of their branches seemed to touch the sky. Tall hedges surrounded the garden. So tall, everyone that passed by could not see inside. Like there was no way in and no way out. Yubai had never left the garden, but had never known this. Her mother and father had kept her there since she was able to walk. 
Little Apple Red, Little Apple Red, I'm gonna miss that up, <laughs> says Uriah's birth had been a difficult one. They cared for her as if she were an egg. So, I'm already gonna say <laughs> these definitely are for older individuals. Like, the story itself is a little deep. Like, it already says, like, was a difficult one, like, a birth thing. So, I'm already saying these are for a little bit older of individuals to get into these dolls. Um, they have prayed to the gods for a child for many years and were fully blessed with one in a rye. She had been born many times before, but had never lived past in infancy. Little Apple Red says she had lived because, in their prayers, they had promised and bound part of its child spirit to the tree gods. Now they believe some of part of Uri kept the garden alive and as beautiful as it was, and that there was none greater in all of the land. It is safest for her there. The garden in the world and our daughter is the queen of it. What use is the outside, the parents would say. So she was made for this purpose based on their parents' prayer. One day, Uri was tending to the roses, talking to them about their day and what plans they had when she heard a sound that seemed to come out of nowhere, howling as low and painful cry. Uri was scared. She had never heard such a sound. She was coming from the other side of the surrounding hedges. She began to back away, fearful of what it might be. So here's the tree they were talking about. And then hers looking for a sound. Just then a small flame appeared and began to burn a hole in the center of the hedge. Little Apple Red says that within seconds the coin sized gap had grown into a boulder sized opening. The flames had eaten through the hedge with ease and created a tunnel large enough for someone to walk through. Irai looked through the hole. So this is her looking through the hole. <laughs> Sorry, I mean, forgive me if I struggle with reading this. <laughs> little Apple Red says, a little white dog lay hurt on the other side. She looked like his white paws had been dipped in red ink. Uri, curious about what she saw before her, went to the little white dog. Uri had never seen such a thing. What strange creature was this? Birds and moths had met, but this, not this. She looked at the dog for a long time and thought, If I can touch you, then what? Then are you real? Then you are real. Sorry. <laughs> there was nothing to be afraid of. She bent down and patted the little dog on the head. The little dog cries seemed to get louder. He rise smiled. You're as real as I am. There's nothing to be afraid of. Uri felt the cold breeze move through her from the little dog to her hand. The little dog's paws were white again. Oh, there's a little doggy in Uri. What strange feeling is this? She thought little Apple Red says that the little white dog jumped up and began to run around in circles around Uri, barking happily. Uri laughed a high and pure laugh like sweet milk and clouds made of cotton. She thought the dog must have been some magical being she had heard of her parents speak of. She thought it was the most wonderful thing she had ever seen. The little dog heard her rustling in some nearby bushes and ran off. Uri was excited by her new friend and followed him. She followed herself among more trees different from those in the garden. What new world is this? She thought. Little Red Ap Little Apple Red says the further she moved away from the opening in the garden, the colder she became. Flowers no longer grew in her footsteps, but it did not matter. There was a whole new world to be seen. The, a whole new world to see. She walked further into the wood. So this is her chasing after the doggy. I love doggies. <laughs> I'm like, it's a doggy. <laughs> The little white dog was sniffing around a stone fountain nearby. She watched the dog in the wander. She went out. What, what would she do next? 
Little Apropos says the little white dog began to bark ferociously, like something was wrong. Irai ran to see what she had found. She looked into the large shallow pond of the fountain. An old man lay floating, face up. Irai climbed into the pond. The old man was pale, looking in, out into nothing. Irai wondered what the man could say underwater with his eyes open. She called to the man, but was out was without a reply. It must be some trickery, she thought. If you can touch your eyes and you do not blink, then it is a trick. So this is her at the fountain. Irai reached into the pond and felt the old man's face. Again, Irai felt the breeze rise up from the old man through her fingertips. She shivered without meaning to. Little Aberwood says the old man sat up suddenly and coughed violently. Irai jumped, but back, jumped back amazed. The little dog barked madly. The old man was coughing and gasping for air, splashing about the pond as if he had been taken over by some spirit. Sorry, Mitchie. <laughs> I fell, cried the old man. I fell and could not get up. Everything turned black. The gods sent the miracle. You have saved me. Irai could not speak. She felt like she could not answer the old man. Words would have not come to her to describe this new world outside the garden. This is her at the fountain still with the doggy. Passers by have heard the old man shouting and ran to see what the trouble was. There was no trouble here, the old man cried. I drowned and she saved me. She brought me back to life. You must come and meet my family. Miracle workers are not born every day. It is not long before news of Irai saving the old man spread throughout the neighborhood villages. The little girl sent by the gods who cannot bring one back to life. Even a little white dog even even a little white dog even follows her. Proof that she is pure of the spirit, they said. The old man's family praised Irai for her courage, felt sorry for her that she could not seem to speak, and took her and little white dog in as their own. So this is, I think, him speaking to the townspeople. Irai found the old man and his family had a large, unkept garden. Little Applerett says, on entering for the first time, she sat in the bed of weeds with her small hands stretched out in front of her. She dug her little fingers deep into the dirt and closed her eyes. The earth beneath her glowed red. A gust of wind quickly spiraled above and around her and settled as fast as it came. Irai had known it, but the old man's granddaughter was watching her from the out from the the granddaughter was watching from the outhouse. Little Apple Red says Irai transformed the garden into some sort of paradise. The old man's granddaughter ran to tell her grandfather of what she had seen. The old man was curious and had to see it for himself. He saw that Irai was petting the stump of an old tree head that had grown in the garden. The old man rubbed his tired eyes. He could not believe what he saw. Before Irai stood a pine tree as if it had never been cut down, and the garden as beautiful as Irai. I think this is her transforming the tree. Sorry, my alarm went off. Um, this is her, I think, transforming the garden. Everyone soon heard of Irai's healing powers and came to her in hundreds to see of old Anne's garden and to be cursed by the great speechless Irai. If one had been driven mad or possessed, all it took was a handshake from Irai and they could be healed. And even when they were cured, the slightest pain, like a sore thumb or an itchy nose, Irai would put right. Irai cursed the sick. She would not only feel cold breezes moving through her, but find that they could not smile nor have happy feelings anymore. Her feelings of wonder and joy in this new world had turned into sadness and bitterness. Soon after, she began to lose her sight. I'm really liking the story so far. Like, not so much like, oh, this is a good story, but this is actually really captivating. <laughs> so I'm really liking it so far.
Irai would spend the evenings by her start by herself staring into space. The little white dog would sit in her lap and keep her company. Petting him made her feel a little bit better. She would she still she could feel something black was growing in the pit of her belly. Urai did not know why she could not speak or laugh anymore. She could not see the flowers and trees she had loved. It angered her that everyone she touched, the male she made better, but made her lose her mind. Why do I feel this way? The family sensed something was wrong, but were afraid to ask Urai. Sometimes they could hear her crackling, cackling to herself. She would not eat or sit with the family. She would just wanted to be alone. She still still people came, but the family did not turn them away. Little Apple says Ira Irai's bitterness grew into anger and from anger to rage. She was now blind. This is interesting so far. That's her in a chair. I'm pretty sure that's her struggling with the blindness part of it the story. One evening after the family had eaten their late meal, they heard a scream, like broken glass and paper cuts. It was coming from the garden. The family ran to see what had caused such a sound. Little Apparatus says something has set Irai all right from inside. A black mist formed a black ball around her. Irai was destroying everything in her path. The little white dog cowered in the corner. The family tried to reason with Irai. Pleading for her to stop, Irai was past sense, past thought. She had blind, she was blind to their grief and deaf to their cries. People ran from the houses out into the street on hearing the noise only to find Irai there speechless wondering one sorry the sentence is complicated. People ran from their houses out into the street on hearing the noise, only to find Irai, their speechless wander, tearing the village apart. She still could not see, but the black mist worked for her, leading her, protecting her. I'm assuming this, be like from her little blurb, she was used. So I think this is her, like, because she came about from a prayer and she was meant to be healing like the humans started taking advantage of that and this is her being unleashed but let's see Yurai moved from the garden through the house out into the street turning everything to ashes little opera says Yurai cannot it would not stop where flowers had grown before fire and chaos were left in Yurai's trail the people began to throw stones or rocks at her the only this only added to Uriah's anger. The black mist spiraling her grew and threw everyone who stood in her way high into the air. Uriah continued into the wood. Little Apple Red says the little white dog had followed Uriah. She could sense that something was near and turned around quickly. She was going to destroy anything that tried to stop her. The little white dog ran towards her barking. When she felt sh her old friend, the black mist around her settled for a moment. You, you started this. I remember now, she thought. The mist became wild again and chased the little white dog deeper into the wood. The dog ran towards the hedge. He had come to the dead end. It could not run away. Irai was not far behind. So here's the black mist. And the black mist with the dolby. Little Apple says a strange thing, strange thing happened. A small coin-sized hole began to burn in the place where the white, little white dog had touched the hedge. The little white dog tried to run further along the barrier, but was cornered by Uriah in the black mist. The dog, now barking madly, had Uriah backed into the hedge. Again, a small opening burned where he had been. Uriah's black mist swallowed the hedge in the little white dog hole. I never, so I'm going to pause for a minute, I never had a doll that had a story like this, so this is actually really cool, and if you kept with me to this part, I highly appreciate it. I struggle with reading sometimes, so thank you for that. But, Ira, but then Uriah sent something that 
she knew. She walked forward, the black fog around her suddenly vanished. Uriah blinked if she had been awoken from a dream. Little Apparit says behind the place where the hedge has been was Uriah's garden. Time had passed and she did not know how much. The perfect world her mother and father had kept her in was not filled with weeds but still beautiful. Two shrines had been made for them in the place where Uriah would hold her special tea parties, but now she had not aged but she had not aged at all. So this is the shrine with the garden. Little Apple Red says that Uriah's absence from the garden had made it with her. It also caused her parents great sadness. They had gone looking for her all those years ago, but had lost all hope when they could not find her. They had tried too hard to protect Uriah from the world outside the garden. It was not perfect like the one they had created for Uriah, but Little Apple Red says, you cannot control everything. Sometimes things just happen. Sometimes people, sometimes protecting people, someone is the same as wounding them. Uriah stood be in between the two shrines. The thing that had set Uriah alight from inside returned and she became angry and vengeful again. I believe that's her in the middle. And her getting angry. Sorry, I just want to look at the time of this. I'm sorry this reading is a little long. Again, thank you. The time black flames were her aurora. This time black flames were her aurora. Re uh, Rai screamed her bitter deafening scream and shut her eyes tight. She fell to her knees wishing this feeling would go away. Her body was on fire. She was dying or had died. She was sure because... She could not feel anything at all. She began to cry. This place is enchanted, you know, said a voice from below. Out there and in here. They were the same, are the same, but not. Uriah opened her eyes. She was still without sight. She did not know that before her, among the dead leaves and flowers, was little apple red. He says her journey into the world outside the garden had changed her. Made her so bitter and angry that she had set herself alight. It was left... It had left her eyes hollow and black. Uriah cried harder. This is what the black Aurora. Who speaks? Who dares to speak to me? What is that that you want from me? If you leave now, you will be spared. Uriah, Uriah warned. I struggle with the bottles sometimes. <laughs> Forgive me. Pick me up and see what happens. Do not worry, you cannot hurt me. Many have tried and failed. Pick me up. Little Apple Red had done this many times before, but Irae did not believe this strange fruit. She was ready to destroy him where he sat. She felt around the little Apple Red and picked him up, and he seeing his chance set to work, Irae felt a warm surface. Her black aurora was now shades of blue and green. She stand up, walked around, and see what happens. Uriah, happy th that the strange creature had cleaned her and made her all of the dark feelings disappear, took three steps forward. In this, in those steps grew azaleas and hollyhock. Uriah left crystals and floating paper boats and felt s and sweet milk and cotton clouds. I guess you have nowhere to go. Your new self won't quite fit out here out there but there is a gathering not far from here where you can show off this new self you wear so well where Uriah asked in between here and there that's the end of it so her parents prayed she came about and the humans found her and they took advantage of her healing powers she ended up losing herself and she struggled but the little apple red came to her and found her a place where she belonged is what it took from it <laughs> i'm not saying that's exactly what it said let me know if you got something different from that and forgive me for my reading skills but that's what i got from the story i highly appreciate a story from a doll like this like i really really think this is cool 
Like, could you imagine getting a Brad style and getting a story that intricate? <laughs> like, that would be insane. <laughs> like, that would be so cool. I know, like, with the Rainbow High now, there's, like, an animated series. So you do get some story with the dolls that are coming out. But, like, I really love this picture book. Like, it's cool. It kind of reminds me when I used to collect CDs and I would get doll, not dolls, I would get CD, like, fold-over books inside of them. And I thought that was really cool. By the way, I forgot to show her mask when I took her out. This is her mask. Um, I'm really obsessed with Kitsune masks. And so, like, I know this is not Kitsune. But, um, I just really love masks. Like, these in general. And I don't know where the mask plays in her story. But it gives her a face. And they all come with masks in series two, apparently. And from the other ones, I have not seen masks. But yeah, that is again, you guys. Again, forgive me for my reading skills. But if you stuck for me to the end, I highly appreciate it. As I said, if you're really into horror and you love fashion dolls, I highly recommend getting one of these dolls. Like the quality of these dolls are high. Like, everything is well made. Her whole kimono is embroidered. Um, her hair is really good quality. Um, her face is pretty good, like, quality, too. Like, this doll is, I don't want to say unsurpassed, but for a horror doll, like, that's not very common in fashion doll, this is pretty unsurpassed. <laughs> so, let me know what you guys think. I'm very happy if you kept with me to the very end. Um, I hope to get better at the storybook reading, especially because I plan to get more of the little apple dolls. Thank you for joining me for a doll. As I said, that when Darling Dolls did this iceberg, it, these were a little bit lower, so I don't know how popular they are, but they caught my attention because of my experience with Japanese horror and horror in general. But if you like this video, please leave a like, and if you subscribe, I highly appreciate it. I'm still doing my Rainbow High P Slumber Party. I was at Pacific Coast. That's a video I did. My Slumber Party <laughs> Rainbow High giveaway. It's all three girls, so it's the whole line. And if you're interested, all you have to do is subscribe and leave a comment on any of my videos. But you have to have the word giveaway so I know that you're in it. If you do that, I'll put you in the list for the giveaway. It's not many, so you have a pretty good chance of winning. I'm putting this a little bit longer because I don't know how I'm feeling and I don't know if I'm going to be depressed and I get this shipped off pretty quickly. So I'm just going to give it a little more time. And I really, I think I'm going to close this at the end of my next video, which is a Bratz video, and I plan to do Jade. I don't have a lot of Jades, so I was going to get more, and I did, so I'm happy to do an unboxing of Jade alone. So yeah, if you leave a comment, I will like or comment also, and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!